all kinds of circumstances, objects, animals, and certainly people can do you harm. Dangers are all around us. But did you know that certain mathematical equations also contain in them unnerving dangers? That if we really sat down to understand them and their implications, it would probably send shivers down your spine. If you thought relatively mundane things like skydiving, chainsaws, or people are dangerous, I have something to tell you about the horrific world-ending implications of physics equations that might give you instant existential crisis. Stay tuned because that's coming up right now. Arguably, this is the most famous equation in all of science. E equals mc squared. Developed by Einstein about 115 years ago in 1905, it shows that mass and energy are equivalent. I want you to pay attention to the c squared part. That's the speed of light, which is 299,792,458 meters per second. A number that on its own is huge, but in Einstein's equation, it is squared. Physicists immediately understood that this meant that mass contained an insane amount of energy. But the practical implications were far from well understood. This energy inside mass was not thought to be accessible. Of course, that changed on July 16, 1945, in a desert in New Mexico, USA, where a team led by Robert Oppenheimer exploded the world's first nuclear bomb. That's what makes this equation so scary. It means that a one kilogram mass about the weight of a large pineapple is equal to nine times 10 to the 16 joules. This is more than a thousand times the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. There's an insane amount of energy in matter. It's the same energy that allows stars, such as our sun, to release immense amounts of radiation over billions of years. Countries around the world have learned to harness that same power in the form of about 12,000 stockpiled nuclear bombs, each of which is more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Imagine the damage one crazy dictator or terrorist could do if they got a hold of just a single such a weapon. Scientists believe that just 100 nuclear bombs would be enough to destroy most of human civilization if you include its immediate physical and ongoing environmental impact. But if you think wiping out human civilization is scary, the next equation has the potential to wipe the entire universe. What you're looking at is the equation for the Higgs potential, which is crucial in particle physics because it explains how elementary particles gain mass and plays a role in the stability of the universe. This stability lies on a razor's edge. It's quite possible that there is a fatal flaw in the way the universe is currently constructed. What am I talking about? Some might consider this a mathematical technicality, but our best and most accurate theory in physics, the standard model of particle physics, points out a scary possibility. The standard model describes how particles in the universe interact via mediation by other particles called bosons. One of these bosons you may have heard of is the Higgs boson. Quantum field theory points out that all particles are wave-like excitations in fields that permeate all of space-time. So electrons are excitations in the electron field. Quarks are excitations in the quark field. The Higgs boson is an excitation in the Higgs field. But unlike every other field, the Higgs field is unique in that even in the absence of any particles, it has a mass or energy. And this is why any other particle that interacts with the Higgs field gets energy, which we perceive as mass. So when electrons, for example, interact with the Higgs field, they gain mass. The vacuum energy of the Higgs field is formally called its vacuum expectation value, which happens to be 246 giga electron volts, or GeV. This value is the only fundamental mass parameter of the standard model. The masses of all other fundamental particles depends entirely on this vacuum expectation value. In the hot early universe, the theory tells us that this expectation value was zero because this was the minimum value of the Higgs potential at that time in the extremely high temperatures near the Big Bang. As the universe evolved, its expansion led to decreasing temperatures, which also led to a new minimum potential in the Higgs field, which was not at the origin, but at a non-zero value of 246 GeV. And this is how we ended up with the fundamental particles having mass. 
Now this is all good and all this theory matches observation. The issue is that if we insert the most precise parameters from experiments in our model, the model suggests that there might be another minimum in this potential, a minimum that is even lower and thus nature would push us to that value. Worse is that it could be an unbounded minimum that is infinitely low. Any transition from where we are now to this new minimum is very unlikely, but because quantum tunneling allows the universe to overcome an energy barrier and tunnel from one point in the lower potential to another, with some probability, there is a chance that it could happen. That's what our best and most accurate theory, the standard model, suggests. Now here's what's scary about that. Should the universe tunnel to this new, lower, unbounded minimum, all massive particles in the universe will suddenly become infinitely massive. This change would propagate at the speed of light, which means we would not see it coming. The universe that we know of will be destroyed, because if it is an infinite minimum, it will send the universe into oblivion. Now the next equation highlights a fundamental mystery in the universe, a mystery we discovered less than 30 years ago in the late 1990s. The equation comes from Einstein's general relativity. The term highlighted here is lambda, which represents the cosmological constant. It signifies a mysterious repulsive force permeating all of space-time, which counteracts gravity and makes the universe expand. Thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, we have a theoretical framework to describe the universe in a rigorous way. However, in the late 1990s, we found out that what we thought was a rigorous model didn't quite hold up. Supernovae observations from the Hubble Space Telescope showed us that the expansion of the universe was slower in the past. This meant that the universe was not only getting bigger and bigger, but getting bigger and bigger faster and faster. The expansion was occurring at an accelerating rate. What does this mean? Well, it seems to suggest that galaxies will get farther and farther apart. There will come a time when the only stars we will see in the sky are from within our own galaxy. We will not be able to observe the two trillion other galaxies that exist. And depending on the severity of the expansion, it might begin to expand so fast that it will rip our Milky Way apart so that we will not see any other stars at all. It will be a very lonely universe. And if it keeps going, then our solar system, then the Earth, and then you and I will be ripped apart too. This is known as the Big Rip, and it would be a sad ending. How can this happen? Well, the mechanism behind it all is dark energy. It's the energy driving the accelerating expansion or stretching of space-time. It's stretching like rubber. Now, it's not clear if the expansion will be so severe that it will lead to a big rip. Luckily, the process is so slow that our sun would have died long before it rips apart. And mankind is unlikely to exist at that point. Now, if there could be something wrong with this model, and we find that the universe will not expand itself into oblivion after hundreds of billions of years, there's another scary equation of physics, which seemingly guarantees an end. The equation is very simple, and many high school students might even know it. This is the second law of thermodynamics. S is entropy, Q is heat energy, and T is temperature. What this equation says is that any change in entropy will be greater than or equal to the transfer of heat energy at some temperature T. So this really tells us that the change in entropy will either always be positive or zero. It can never be negative. Since most processes produce some kind of heat overall, entropy change will usually be positive. If no heat is produced, the lowest entropy change will be zero. For simplicity, entropy can be thought of as a measure of disorder. In other words, for a closed system, which is a system isolated from everything else where no energy or matter can enter or leave the system, entropy can only increase, or at least not change at all. Practically, most processes increase entropy because some energy somewhere is lost by a friction or other process. Consider when you push the brake in your car. The brake of your car transfers the useful kinetic energy of the wheels into useless heat energy, which is lost. The entropy of the system consisting of the car and the atmosphere increases. Now, if we consider the universe itself as a closed system, then the same laws apply. What this means is that eventually all stars will burn out after having converted all their energy to heat. This means no useful work can be done, no fusion in the stars, no living things, no activity whatsoever. All will go quiet. 
Basically, the universe will have turned off all the lights, like when you go to bed at night. At this point, we will reach the heat death of the universe because nothing more can be done, and all the useful energy of the universe will have been spent. A quiet, lifeless, peaceful sleep. Our fifth and final equation may seem harmless at first. You may even recognize it as just the classic equation for calculating the orbital velocity of heavenly objects. In fact, it's derived from work that was done way back in the 1600s by Isaac Newton and Johann Kepler. We can use it to find the approximate velocity of stars at a specific distance from the galactic center of mass of a galaxy. But observations by Vera Rubin and others in the 20th century found a glaring discrepancy. The stars in the outer rim of galaxies were moving much faster than they should. If we use this equation to explain this anomaly, we find that the best explanation appears to be that there must be much more mass than what we can observe with our instruments. In fact, this hidden mass is several times more. The content making up you and me, also known as baryonic matter. It's only around 20% of the total matter content of the universe. So what is the other 80% of matter? Well, it's dark. We can't see it because it doesn't appear to emit, absorb, or reflect any light or any radiation of any kind. We can observe its gravitational effects in galaxies and galaxy clusters, but that's all. We call it dark matter. Imagine what could be hiding in the dark. It could be a different world altogether, maybe with its own living beings. Maybe they have their own dark atoms and dark planets, and maybe they can't see us either. There could be a whole universe out there that we currently have no access to. We wouldn't know. We see gravity disturbances corresponding to this matter and other effects from that, but we have never seen or detected this mysterious dark matter. But what if they can see us, but we just can't see them? We better hope that they're friendly. We tend to be rather hostile to unknown species. Let's hope they're not like us. Now, if you're like me here on Earth, I buy nearly everything I need online. And the one tool that saved me a lot of research time comparing prices is Cooper, who were kind enough to sponsor our video today. It's a completely free browser extension that works on Chrome, Edge, Opera, Firefox, and Safari. Whenever you buy anything, for example, from Amazon, it automatically searches over 200,000 merchants globally and finds the best deals and savings for the very product you're buying. So you don't have to go searching all over the internet yourself. It can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year on your everyday purchases. Over 8 million people like yourself use it weekly. It's really one of the easiest extensions to install and use. You just search for Coopert extension and click the install button. Then whenever you go to buy a product, it alerts you to lower prices elsewhere online. You can then take advantage of the savings by just clicking the Coopert button on your screen. And the best part is that this is completely free. No subscriptions, nothing to pay, just savings for you. Click the link in the description to download or go to the link you see on the screen. I highly recommend it. It's a free extension. Download it today. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.